I think it's important now for me to be a little bit more public with what's going on with me, share my story, and if it reaches out to one or two people and helps inspire them or give them hope, it's part of the reason why I'm here today and, and want to be more open about what's going on. My name is Kenneth Mitchell. I play uh, four different characters. Cole, the Klingon general leader from the House of Kor. Cloak us at once. His father, Cole Shah. Your union is an insult to my son, Cole. At the end of the second season, I had the opportunity to play Tanavik, who was the keeper of the time crystals. We are the time keepers. You know, it was a different style of Klingon. He was more of a, a monk. Guardians, not rulers. Wasn't as aggressive as Cole and Coleshaw. He was a little bit more passive and mindful. Love the fact that I got to play with Pike and intertwine that story that is already ingrained in canon about seeing his future. He was very special to me because it was during a time when I was already diagnosed um, with, with ALS. That character kind of manifested itself um, and that opportunity manifested itself um, because I wanted to keep going. You know, I voiced uh, that to Alex and the producers. They were so supportive and loving and they were just Whatever you need, Ken, let's, let's, let's make it happen. It was quite challenging because I was starting to feel the effects of the illness. I was tired and I remember there's a beautiful photo that Erica and Bowie took of me just exhausted, like 2 a.m. in the morning, sitting in my Tanavik uh, prosthetics and outfit, sitting on the stairs, just trying to stay zen, trying to stay in it. I feel really blessed to be able to play that part, given the circumstances. First, I, I will kind of back up and I, w I was diagnosed with ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. It's a neurodegenerative disease that affects the motor neurons, um, which are like from your thought to action, uh, the motor neurons are what you know, connects your brain to your muscles. Unfortunately, with the disease, those break down. Um, so you're kind of trapped inside your body as, and inch by inch, you know, your muscles are breaking down and you have like lack of movement uh, in your limbs and eventually it moves its way to your diaphragm and your lungs and you have trouble breathing and swallowing. I have what's called sporadic ALS, which makes up like 90% of the cases around the world. I have what's called limb first ALS, so it's attacking my limbs, my arms, my legs, and working its way in. When I was first diagnosed, um, I was still quite able. Uh, I had uh, some cramping and fisticulations, which is a fancy word for, for twitching, in my left arm. Some weakness there in my hand, and I was starting to feel a little bit more off balance and and more fatigued. But I was still very very able. So in playing Tanavik, I do remember moments where I was walking with Pike during scenes and feeling a little bit off balance and really trying to stay focused on keeping centered and not falling over. But the the set, everyone was so lovely at accommodating me and making sure that, that I was okay and safe and secure. I'm really, really grateful for that. During that shoot, it was around Halloween, and I remember going from my trailer to the set because we were on location at, at UFT, and no one really turned their head at me because everyone thought I was just in a Halloween costume. That particular shoot was a little different for me because I wasn't working with the actors that I knew so much already. Uh, I just got introduced to Anson at the time, so it was a bit of a new relationship. He was going through some tough times with his dog, okay. and he had a lot of lines to learn for the season finale. 
So there was definitely a respect and, and a love there, but I remember being a little bit more isolated than I normally remember, but Mary Chief, oh God, I love her. She came to set and um, stayed with me the whole time. She was the first person I told about my diagnosis, you know, back in August uh, 2018. Right over here, please. She's been with me the whole step of the way. I mean, it's a real true friendship. I, I, I love her to death. When I did get the news about my diagnosis, which was an outer body experience in itself, um, you know, I felt like I was in my own movie watching the doctor and neuro the neurologist to, you know, tell this kid that he, he had a terminal illness. When I got diagnosed, I, I walked my son to school every day and uh, he would go up the ramp He'd uh, hang up his backpack, I'd give him a hug, and he'd go into the classroom. After he put his stuff in his desk, he'd run over to the window. I'd always meet him there, and uh, we would always reenact the Spock and Kirk moment where they're against the glass, and they hold up the live long and prosper sign against the glass, and that was like, that's how I started my day every, every morning during this, you know, diagnosis. Well, sometimes I'd walk away in tears, but, um, you know, they were, they were happy tears. Part of my marking point for how my body was, was whether I could actually do the Live Long and Prosper sign. Because I, I always took pride at conventions. I could do the double, the double hand, the double whammy, and I always take photos with, with, uh, with the fans. Um, and then, you know, my, my left hand was the first thing to kind of uh, degrade, unfortunately. So I couldn't do it with that hand. That was also my signing hand. Uh, so I had to switch over to my right hand. So there are limited edition right-handed signatures out there somewhere. But I could, all, I could still do the Live Long and Prosper uh, sign on my right hand. Um, so I'd wake up every morning. I'd hold my hand up and I'd do it. And I'd be like, you're okay. Um, but yeah, October 2019, I woke up you know, one morning and I couldn't do it. Um, and yeah, it was hard, but uh, there, there was, um, it was a, a reminder to me about the power of the human spirit. Here I was uh, losing my independence, um, you know, my ability to grab things and, and move things with my hand and lift things. And you know, you're actually it's really faced with looking inside yourself and asking yourself what is important. As I continue to live inside this body that continues to break down, I just try to keep my human spirit healthy and, and keep reminding myself that I have a lot to give still. I go to South Korea and I, I get these uh, stem cell treatments. You know, Michelle Yo is incredibly supportive in helping me get, get there and communicating to them how they need to take care of me, that I was this uh, precious Star Trek commodity. <laughs> Honestly, the moment I arrived there, it was nothing but first class help and um, I, I remember waking up from my first round of surgery and the four doctors were standing in my room and they were all holding up the live long and prosper sign and uh, I, I have it ingrained in my brain. I just remember that moment feeling, wow, this really has transcended the globe um, and this show means a lot to so many, so many people. To me, Star Trek is about science and discovery and love and hope and inclusiveness. And it's not lost on me that that is my life right now. <laughs> and it's, um, it's deeply gratifying to be a part of that community and to be involved in something that is a part of all of those themes. 
Mary helped me articulate and express the news to the cast. It was like a, a, a blanket of support and love. Sonequa and her husband, Kenrick, who I love so much, they've been, um, you know, real guiding light. <clears throat> and Doug, I remember uh, Wilson giving me some wonderful advice, which was maybe you can look at this like a gift. And instead of asking yourself, why me? You know, maybe this is what's meant to happen and you are given an opportunity to you know, make a choice each day to, to live life to its fullest. I'd like to say that I did that before my diagnosis, but I think that when faced with something so difficult and potentially terminal, it just uh, allows you to experience life in a incredibly precious way that um, not everyone gets to experience. And that is a gift. It's opened up my eyes a bit to the disabled community and the opportunities that are available and that should be available. There's you know, so much talents out there and abilities that people have beyond their disabilities. And I think it's important for all of us to keep an open heart and an open mind, being more acceptable and you know, seeing people beyond their disabilities and understanding that you know, we all have talents and things that we can offer. You know, I can't speak for everyone, but, you know, I am, I am disabled, you know, and um, I'm learning that it is uh, a beautiful community of people. I don't feel alone, and I would like other people to know that they're not alone and um, I hope that I will continue to be able to interact and uh, meet the communities you know specifically the Star Trek fans and community I want to continue to go to the conventions and continue to interact with this loving family um, I mean, they give me as much as, you know, I can offer them and more so. I, you know, I wanted to help tell this story and, uh, you know, help inspire other people, including my family and my, my kids and my wife, by working and keep staying inspired and keep pushing through and keep finding happiness. I, I think that hopefully we'll send a message to other people with disabilities that, that you can do it. You can try to find the positive and the good in it. And I th also think it's a message to the production side of things that you know there are a lot of people out there that have talent and creativity and the abilities to, to deliver. Um, and to give them an opportunity and a chance. There's a, a bigger, beautiful story here that hopefully will inspire other people.